For the CircuitPython Parsec today, I'd like to show you a StemaQT port hack. This is useful for adding a couple of pins while you're prototyping something without having to solder any headers or wires to your board. So you can see here, I've got a KB2040, and I'm gonna be actually using one of these in the Doom keyboard project, more about that later. Uh, and while I'm working on this, I didn't want to settle in on how I'm soldering stuff together, which pins are gonna get wired to what, uh, but I did want to be able to test uh, a, essentially a latching button. And so what I've done is I've used one of these great little Stemma QT to test point connector breakout cable. You can see when I ground either of these two, the yellow or the blue, which are uh, connected to the SCL and SDA on the Stemma QT port, I'm actually just using those like buttons. So this one right now uh, you can actually leave it connected there, so you can kind of latch it onto there. Uh, it's showing that the SCL pin, which I'm calling pin 1, has been pressed because the value is false. It's a pull-down resistor. Uh, and here it is released, and I can grab that blue one there. Same thing. I'm just touching the ground pins that are available. Uh, but you've also got a ground pin available right here on this black cable, so we can go and use that as well while we're testing things. And so the way this works is in the code, I'm simply bringing in time, board to get pin definitions, digital IO, because I'm doing pin stuff for, for button pressing and latching, uh, and NeoPixel, just so I have a little indicator. I'm setting up the NeoPixel, and then I've got these two pins, pin one, I'm saying digital IO, digital in, out, board SCL. That's the serial clock on the I square C port right there, the semi-QT port. And then pin two is SDA, the data pin on that same port right there. Then I set those up as pull down resistors, give them a uh, little initial print that you'll see when I reset. So we can uh, reset the board right there. You'll see when it starts, it gives us an indicator. It says, uh, right now, both of those are uh, not grounded. So the, the value is called true. Then in the main loop here, I check both of these pins. I say if pin value, pin one value, uh, is not the same as the last pin value, which is what it was when it started, then we've experienced a change. This is sort of like a debouncing type of thing with state. Uh, and then I print the pin here, uh, and then I pin, I uh, fill the pixel there. So print pin one SCL released value, and then I print out the value. If there's a value on it and it's changed, that's because we are releasing, and you'll see it says released. If there's not a value on it and it changed, uh, since it has the pull down resistor, then we have connected it. Uh, same happens for pin two, and then we have a little sort of debounce sleep there. The reason I'm using this is actually for some boot pie stuff where I want to be able to plug this in and not have it show up as a uh, USB drive or I want it to only be a HID and not a MIDI. Uh, so any of those type of boot pie operations are nice to be able to have a little reversible latch. And so while I'm uh, testing this out, this is a really nice way to be able to get a couple of free pins for uh, GPIO that you can connect up pretty, uh, pretty nicely and securely without doing any soldering, without putting it into a breadboard. And so that is how you can do a Stemma QT port hack inside of CircuitPython on boards with a Stemma QT port. And that is your CircuitPython Parsec.